Sup. So I'm sure you've heard about this website, Timu, which people have been calling the new wish.com because it lets you shop like a billionaire. And by that, I mean, it lets you buy a ton of knockoff cheap stuff for like a fraction of what you'd pay for the real thing. Though you can find some decent stuff on there, but what I'm gonna show you today is not that at all because as i was browsing timu i came across some listings that i thought were most certainly bootleg nintendo games now i'm not talking about knockoff consoles like this that came bizarrely with this weird famicom like controller i think they're going for a supreme branding thing here but yeah this was definitely one of the more interesting things i found on there i'm not talking about things like this i'm not even talking about those like 501 game cartridges that you can put into a game boy or a nintendo ds or something like that. I'm talking about listings that were advertising actual Nintendo game titles, but are selling counterfeit copies instead. So I bought a few of them. And my suspicions were pretty much immediately confirmed. These are all fake, bootleg, non-genuine copies of these games. But do they actually work? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. And we're going to begin with this copy of Pokemon Pearl, which cost me $23, actually not far off from what real genuine copies of this game go for used on eBay. And when you put it up next to a genuine copy, I've got Pokemon Diamond here, because this is the copy that I ended up purchasing back in the day when these games were out. It doesn't look like too bad at first. I mean, the only real giveaway to me is the sizing of these top and bottom uh, white borders. You can see uh, on the Pokemon Diamond one here, the bottom one is much smaller. The top one is a little bit larger. The ESRB logo looks right. The Pokemon logo, I mean, everything's spelled correctly. There's a little bit of like, uh, there's the spacing here super tight between the Nintendo and the Pokemon Company logo. Here's a real zoomed in close up of the two. And some of the things I notice also are the Nintendo quality seal. The coloring is a bit off on the fake one here. They also have the trademark symbol. You can barely make it out though, but they've got the trademark symbol instead of the registered trademark symbol, like what appears on the genuine one here. And just the quality of the label too. I mean, it definitely feels different, but the, the, the entire cartridge feels different. That's the other thing. This quality of the plastic is pretty poor compared to the genuine one. Uh, but even that was not the biggest giveaway. The biggest giveaway, this was a fake, is the micro SD card slot on the back because yeah, this is actually a flash cart that they just took a ROM of Pokemon Pearl, put it on this 256 megabyte SD card, and they just stuck that in here. Uh, and that's, you know, they just put a, a Pokemon Pearl label on. Uh, there was actually uh, another listing I found on Timu was for this. Uh, remember I mentioned those 501 cartridges? Well, here's one of them. They actually included a pink DS stylus as well. I'm sure it's a knockoff one. But if we uh, take this out of here, this Pokemon Pearl cartridge arrived in the same exact like housing here, this uh, plastic case. But this one here, this 520 and one 3DS cartridge, oh my god guys, it's a 3DS cartridge, but it fits into a regular <laughs> Nintendo DS, because it's not actually a 3DS cartridge, they just put that on the label here. But you flip it over to the back, and yep, it's another flash cart with an unbranded micro SD card inside with a bunch of ROMs on it. So yeah, these are like exactly the same part, they're just putting a different label on the front. And uh, I mean, at least with this one, I mean, you know if you buy one of these, this is nothing official at all, but they're trying to pass this this one off as like a real genuine copy of Pokemon Pearl when it's not and that's definitely very scummy. Speaking of Pokemon, next up we're taking a look at Pokemon Leaf Green. Now I purchased this because I have a genuine copy of Pokemon Leaf Green. Used to play it all the time, but I have no idea where it is. I tore up my entire house trying to find it to no good results. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to use images to kind of compare this to the real thing. But I have to say this is a really, really good fake. Uh, normally with these, or at least the ones that I've seen, and they're probably older ones, uh, with these Game Boy Advance fakes, is they won't even have the Game Boy Advance logo up here. It'll just say game or nothing at all. On the back here, they've got the Nintendo logo, they've got the model number, they've got made in Japan, patent pending. Uh, and the label, I mean, everything's spelled correctly, 
you've got the correct like ESRB logo, um, the Pokemon company and Nintendo text is there, the seal is there, the part number is down there, and the plastic is a much lower quality. But if you didn't have a genuine one to compare this to, uh, this could definitely be passed off as a real thing. Now, this was the cheapest thing that I bought out of these three items. Uh, this cost me less than $5. And good luck finding one of these on eBay for less than $5. Uh, it also came in this clear plastic casing that says Made in China on the label right there, which is a major contradiction of the Made in Japan on the back of the cartridge. So, yeah, there's definitely some big giveaways here, but if you still were not sure if this was a fake or a real one, you could always take it apart and take a look at the PCB. So we'll go ahead and do that. That. And again, I don't have a, a real one to compare this to, so I'm going to have to resort to editing in images uh, of what a real PCB would look like. So here it is. They've definitely tried to make this look as genuine as they can. They've even got the copyright 2002 text down there. The Nintendo text does not look off from a real one. There's actually two variants, at least for Pokemon Leaf Green here, of uh, you know the the genuine board. So if you have one of these two, uh, it's a genuine game. On the fake one here, the fake ones all seem to have this big black blob here somewhere on it. So that's a major giveaway because the real ones do not have that. And just the chip layout you can see is, is way different uh, from the from the two genuine ones. So uh, yeah, this is 100% of fake. Fake, but it's definitely convincing. I mean, again, this is miles better from some of the other fakes that I've seen. Uh, so whoever made this definitely did their homework and tried to make it look uh, rather convincing. And uh, well, that makes uh, your job, if you're looking for one of these things, uh, a little bit more difficult because, well, I mean, first off, the biggest giveaway, like I said, is the price. I mean, you're not going to find somebody selling one of these for five bucks on eBay, maybe like a broken one or like just the outer casing or something. I don't know. But uh, do these two games actually work? Well, I honestly have no idea because I've not tested them yet. So we're going to find out here together on video. So I'm going to bring over my original Nintendo DS that we're going to use to prop up my Nintendo DS Lite's top screen. And uh, we're going to, uh, well, first, let's uh, pop in the copy of Pokemon Pearl here and see how good of a fit that this is. So, yeah, it fits in. I mean, well, this one fit in, so I would have expected this one to as well. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this on and uh, we'll see what we uh, what we get ourselves into. And I'm gonna use this fake stylus, which is absolutely fake because it is extremely low quality. So let's see if it, uh, okay. <laughs> Deep Labyrinth. Okay, so this is a is this a completely different game? I'm gonna crack up if this is a okay. Okay, uh, I was gonna say so whatever like firmware that they're using to trick the DS into thinking that it's a real game uh, presents that as the game title. Um, so it does load up into a like ROM selector here, and uh, it looks like is this like a screenshot? from the game i think that might be so it's like has this already been played or something but yeah this is the only rom on here as you can see and let's hit uh y for info so yeah pokemon pro let nds the last change 2021 9 10 file size 58.34 megabytes save type unknown slash auto oh and look at that you've got cheats too that you can enable so yeah this is totally a real game guys uh, if it'll actually load up the menu, there it is. So yeah, I've got a bunch of cheats here that you can select. So okay, we'll go out of that. Uh, what are the settings? Okay, so you can select the save type, link with GBA. You can change the rumble strength. Okay, let's uh, let's start it up here and see what happens. Yep, it's starting up. Oh my gosh, it has been so long since I've heard this music. Cause it's been like it's been probably over a decade since I've played Pokemon Diamond. Holy crap. Um. We'll just hit start here. And, uh, oh my gosh, that sound. <laughs> it's all coming back to me slowly but surely. So yeah, there's no save data, so it's just starting from the beginning. Uh, welcome to the world of Pokemon. Yes, of course. Um, so I'm guessing that image that it had on the top screen was just to like represent the game. Uh, I thought it might have been like a, a save or, or something like a, you know, image of that. But, uh, oh, I don't want to go into here. Get out of here. I know, oh my gosh, yes, I know the bottom is called the touch screen. Yes, I understand everything. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Would you like to know more about anything else? No info needed. I guess we'll go through this setup process here. And then what I'll do is I'll save the game, and we'll uh, see if that actually, oh yeah, I gotta hit the 
center button here. All right, so we're finally done with that. Let's open up the menu here and let's go to save. Would you like to save the game? Yes. Saving a lot of data. Do not want to turn off the power. Okay. Save the game. Yay. All right. So let's see if it actually uh, saves data properly. Yeah, it saves it just fine. So we can load up. And there we are. Just thought that would be worth checking. But yeah, so that is the, uh, that's the Pokemon Pearl fake. Let's go ahead and pop in the Pokemon Leaf Green one and see if this actually is recognized as Pokemon Leaf Green by the system. Start GBA, oh yeah, well, it's not actually gonna say the title or anything. So we start GBA game and there we go. Yeah, it's loading up. Got to go through the tutorial again here. I'll just go ahead and do the same thing. I'll go ahead and go through the um, introduction and then make a save and we'll see if it's able to save data properly. All right, so here we are. We'll go ahead and hit start here and let's go down to save. I don't really expect there to be any problems with uh, the, the, the save data. This was mainly with the bootlegs like of the original Game Boy Pokemon games that had like physical save batteries in them. Uh, the ones on the bootlegs were like notoriously awful and they would just, they just wouldn't last really long at all. And uh, so you would just lose save data. Save file will be loaded. Yep, there we go. So yeah, no issue saving at all. Not that I really thought they were going to be, but uh, yeah, this is definitely the best fake out of all of these. There's no question about it. Um, this compared to the Pokemon, it's like, it's not, I mean, this is in a league of its own here. This one, it's so obviously fake. Uh, and speaking of this, let's go ahead and briefly try out the uh, 520 and one here. Uh, and see what we got going on. I'm curious to see if, um, oh my God, guys, look, I'm putting a 3DS game into my Nintendo DS. Uh, I'm curious to see if uh, this will be recognized as that same game. Uh, yes, it is. So I imagine that's gonna be the same across all these cartridges. Uh, though we've got a different menu layout here. So uh, we we'll go to micro SD card. 520, so here's all the ROMs. So we got, okay, I just loaded Super, New Super Mario Brothers uh, unintentionally there, because I hit A twice. Um, yeah, there it is. So what a what a great game. It's been so long since I've played that too. Uh, but let's just, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, because I do want to get to the N64 game. Uh, but let's just kind of scroll through here and see uh, what glorious ROMs they have, and see if they've got any like awful, terrible ones. Because that just seems to be like a rule with these 500, 1000, whatever in one game carts, there's always like a weird ROM hack or two. That's been my experience anyway. I'm not really seeing anything that stands out to me as like being a ROM hack, though I don't know what all these games are. Um, oh yeah, Hell Kitty Birthday Adventure. Yeah, that sounds like a great... Uh, <laughs> it's probably... Yep, yeah, it's Hello Kitty Birthday Adventure. Or Birthday Adventures with an S on the end. Huh. It lied to us twice, or maybe it did say adventures. You know what? I don't really care because we're not really talking. I mean, this is the most boring thing out of this entire video, I would say. So yeah, we'll just set it aside for now. And um, let's go ahead and move on to, honestly, what I'm most interested in, and that is the copy of Super Mario 64. So this is one of the many Nintendo 64 games that are currently being sold on Timu, and it's also the most expensive because I paid $30 for this, which is actually around what I paid for this genuine copy of Mario 64 on eBay. And speaking of eBay, when I was looking for this genuine copy, I found a few listings of people selling these fake copies and passing them off as real games, saying like it's a brand new copy of Mario 64. And some of the photos had like this bag and everything, which I mean, a brand new copy of Mario 64 would not come in a plastic bag with a barcode slapped on it. It would come in the original box. I don't know if these sellers, if they're being malicious intentionally and trying to pass these off as real, or maybe they don't know themselves. I'd like to think it's the latter, but it's definitely one of those two things. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and talk about how you can tell one of these fake games from a real one. So let's say you didn't have this plastic bag that it came in. Well, first of all, the quality of the plastic itself. Uh, it's a much lower quality plastic. It feels cheaper. It's much lighter than a genuine copy here, but you wouldn't be able to tell that by looking at photos. So let's take a look at the front label here. The fake one, the coloring, it looks a little bit darker. Uh, this one looks more vibrant on the real one here. 
Also, the spacing of some of this stuff. So, like, the ESRB Kids to Adults uh, rating, you can see it's a larger box here on the real one. On the fake one, the Nintendo Seal of Quality looks to be larger. There's also red text instead of white text underneath the Nintendo logo. And uh, there's also, like, a white outline. There's also a drop shadow on the N64 logo here. You see how it looks on the real one up here? There's no drop shadow at all. Uh, but still, pretty good and convincing uh, front label. The spelling is right and everything. Uh, we flip it over to the back here and look at the back label. It is in a completely different font here on the fake one. But still, this is a pretty decent quality fake. Uh, though the biggest giveaway on here is the Nintendo logo. So if we take a look at the real one here... You see how uh, above the, well, the dot on the eye in Nintendo, you see how it's like square there? Take a look at the fake one here. It's actually circular. Uh, also, the just the way this was printed on here, it doesn't really feel right at all. Just, I mean, that's of course going by feel. Uh, also, the registered trademark symbol is much larger and it's almost touching the edge of it here and also almost touching the O. Here's how it is on the real one. So you see it's really, really tiny. You can barely see it, but it is there. Uh, but again, worst case scenario, you could always take these apart. So let's go ahead and take apart the real one first. So we'll go ahead and swap out the bit on my uh, screwdriver here. And we'll go ahead and uh, take this apart and we'll get the screws out of the fake one while we're at it. Now, they do use the same exact uh, screw type. Um, so, again, the bootleggers of this one tried to, uh, you know, make it as convincing as possible. So, here's the fake one with the back cover off. And here is the real one, which is a little bit more difficult to get off. So, uh, we'll pull that off there. And, okay, so, first major giveaway, the fake one does not have screws holding down this bracket, it just comes right off. The real one here has two uh, Phillips screws, so I gotta change bits again. Alright, so, we'll take that off. And you can see, here's the real one, right? You've got a capacitor here, you've got a copyright date of 1996, Nintendo branding on it. Here's the fake one. There's no Nintendo branding at all. They did not uh, bother to put any of that on here. Uh, so you can see, I mean, again, the layout of the board, the chip design and everything. This looks like a way more, you know, recent PCB compared to this one here. Uh, so it, it, it's very obviously fake. Uh, we'll go ahead and just pull it out here and I'll show you the uh, reverse side of it. So here's the reverse side. And uh, we'll pull out the real one and I'll uh, take you... A on the back here as well so yeah you can see it's real i mean this one unlike the uh game boy or the uh, leaf green game boy game here they did not uh bother to put any printing on it uh, i guess they didn't really think anybody was going to bother to take this apart of course the big question is does the fake one actually work well we're going to put it into my Nintendo 64 that I just recently region unlocked. Yes, this was the reason why I bought the Nintendo 64 and got it from Japan and all that. If you missed that video, check it out here. Because, yeah, I imported a Nintendo 64 from Japan because it was actually cheaper for me to do that than to buy one on eBay. Because, holy cow, retro console prices are freaking nuts these days. Um, so, yeah, I'll go ahead and reassemble these and we'll pop the bootleg game into my N64 and we'll see what it gives us. All right, so we've got the N64 set up over here and we're just going to pop in the bootleg and see where it takes us. I'm sure it's going to work just fine, which, yep, there it is. So... I mean, just like the other games, it's going to be the game that you think it's going to be when you buy it. It's just that it's it's not real at all. So let's go ahead and start a new file here and go through the lovely intro that I don't know how many times I've seen this. It's uh, It has definitely been a lot. Yeah, one of the interesting things that I found out th that they've been doing with these listings on Timu is... They're trying to make it to where, like, basically to where you can just figure out what game it is that they're selling... But they try to kind of disguise it, sort of, and I think in doing so, they think that it's, like, gonna make it more difficult for Timu or Nintendo to crack down on them. I don't know how serious that Timu is about getting rid of these listings, but um, two of the listings I purchased from, this Super Mario 64 listing and the Pokemon Leaf Green one, are not on Timu anymore. However, there's already listings 
up by maybe the same sellers, maybe different sellers that are selling the same stuff. And there's a bunch of other N64 games. Uh, so this is still going on as of me filming this video. But what's interesting is on the Nintendo 64 games, they do this weird thing where they blur out the front label. So like in this one, for example, the word Mario, I believe, was just blurred out. But you could still tell that it was Mario 64. They'll either do that or they will make the image of the front side of the cartridge really small. And the other ones will all be, you know, a normal size. But the first one will be super small to where you can just, you know, make out what game it is. So they'll do one of those two things. And then they'll actually change the title of the game in the listing. So according to Timu, this was not a copy of Super Mario 64. It was a copy of The Legend of Super Mario 64. You can also find classics like The Legend of Pokemon Stadium. And my personal favorite, The Legend of Ocarina of Time. Yeah, it seems like they're doing those things to try and like sort of get around copyright infringement and trademark violations even though it's absolutely not going to do that because they're still selling a freaking bootleg game just blurring out a, like an image or changing the game title is not going to change that fact so yeah that's bootleg mario 64 uh in all of its glory and those are all the bootlegs that i purchased for this video but I figured before we'd end things off that we'd take a look at that sub console that you saw at the beginning of the video. I literally bought that just for that intro gag, but I mean, we got to take a look at it. Why not? So let's find out what's up with the sub console. I promise that's the last pun I'll do. But uh, yeah, right off the bat, I know you're not going to believe this. The plastic is super cheap. Uh, the buttons, I mean, they work. They're buttons, but they don't really, I mean, they're not the greatest feeling buttons ever. They're definitely going for the design of like the Game Boy. You know, they got that whole thing going on here. And it does have a rechargeable battery. That's why I've got it plugged in via its micro USB cable. So there it is. Uh, although it did come with like the tiniest micro USB cable ever. So I'm using a larger one so I can actually, you know, plug it in. Um, but yeah, so it's got that up here. It has a, uh, this port right here is used uh, to send a composite out signal so that you can plug it into a TV. So you can do that. And that's actually how you can kind of play with a second player, unless you want them to be looking at this screen as well. Uh, which theoretically, you know, you could do that because this plugs into uh, this other port, uh, right? Where is it? Right here? No? Where's... Is this the same? Interesting. Okay, so this is both a charging port and a uh, second player port, so you can't be charging the console while you have the second player controller plugged in. And here's the box. It does advertise itself as a 401, the SUP game box, that is the name of it, plus support external gamepad double against. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, on the side here, you've got the barcode, you've got the, in the little color indicator. There are other colors of this as well. Uh, so a console AV cable, DC cable, user manual. Oh yeah, the user manual. We gotta take a look at this too. This is a you know requirement with these videos. Though let's finish taking a look at the box. On the side here, digital game system, 3.0 inch, super wide LCD. The console is slim, portable, and trendy. Digital multi-platform device can play on TV. The backlit function of the screen ensure player can play everywhere. With powerful rechargeable battery pack, includes an AC adapter and a lithium ion rechargeable battery. Six hours of continuous gameplay. I hope that's true, but I'm not going to play this thing for six hours to find out. And uh, it tells you what everything is on here on the top or on the side, however you're looking at the box. So there you go. Here's our user manual for the Retro FC. So they're definitely going with the Famicom stuff there. Thank you. Thanks for purchasing Playing Vision Portable. Playing Vision Portable product designed for many hours of game playing... <laughs> Game playing in fun. This product is small and portable, so you can take it anywhere. Please read the following contents prior to connecting and playing in to ensure proper use and care. Oh my gosh, reading through these manuals is like one of the funniest things that I get to do on this channel. Uh, so yeah, right here we've got that same diagram we saw on the box, got your accessories, and down here you've got a troubleshooting table. Information contained herein is subject to change without prior notice. I always love that. They're basically saying we could put whatever we want in here and you can't do anything about it uh, but yeah let's get back to the sub console right here and power it on so we got this lovely uh music here that's totally not obnoxious whatsoever and you've got chinese and english um so we're gonna select english and hit uh start so we've got super mario uh oh i just went all the way down pinball 
Uh, Super Mario, Mario 14, Mario 3, Dr. Mario, Mario Brothers, Turtles 1, 4, Contra 1, Contra Fork, Contra 7. All right, so what is Mario 14? I guarantee this is some bootleg, because that always seems to be the rule. We got to hit start here, right? All right. This is not looking like a Mario game. Okay, we got some Japanese, so is I wonder if this is a Japanese-only thing. Uh, yeah, this is definitely not a Mario game. <laughs> but it's Super Mario 14, there it is. Copyright 1993 Wario. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a ROM hack. Yeah, this is in no way a Mario game at all. <laughs> Alright, so... We got, like, two jumps here. This is a, a lighter jump. Uh, I'm surprised I actually avoided that for as long as I did. This is a higher jump, and you're attacking with that. But yeah, all the sprites and everything have been changed. Like, we got uh, Koopas here. Can I jump? Thank you. Okay, we got to get in there with a the key. Uh, but yeah, there's, like, there's no items to pick up, I don't think. Yeah. Alright, well I died. Well, I just looked it up and this is a ROM hack of a Japanese exclusive Famicom game. Uh, so, I was not off there. But, it's just really, <laughs> it's just bizarre. God, some of these ROM hacks, I mean, they're, they're so hilarious to me. Um, but okay, let's, uh, let's get back here and go to English. And, let's just scroll down until we find something else interesting. So, I mean, I'm sure Super Mario, Mario 3, it's gonna be regular, you know. Although, what is, because we got Super Mario, and okay, well, Mario Brothers is gonna be the original Mario Brothers. Um, let's see... God, don't you love this loud freaking sound effect every time you go down? Although we can use the volume wheel to turn it all the way down. Ooh, we got Galaga on here? Oh yeah, of course I gotta play that. I cannot pass up that opportunity. Uh, so, yeah, we'll start it up here. You know, I've never, uh, or actually, I take that back. I was about to say I've never played Galaga on a really small screen like this, but then immediately I thought of, uh, the copy of Namco Museum I used to have for, uh, the Game Boy. Um, and I, I played Galaga on that, like, a ton. Um, but still, nothing beats the arcade, I mean, really. Like, even to this day, whenever I go to, like, a, like, a hotel or something, and they just happen to have, like, a, you know, Galaga, uh, arcade machine. Um, cause, yeah, I have been in, like, you know, typically, like, older hotels that have, like, a, you know, game room or, like, something like that. Uh, they might have a, uh, you know, older Galaga machine, and when they're like 25 cents, oh my gosh, it's like, I'll be there for a while. <laughs> um, you know, when I have nothing else better to do. Which, usually when you're at a hotel, it's like you're just kind of waiting around for things to happen, you know, wherever you're, wh wherever you are, whatever reason you went on the trip. Um, oh wow, I just completely fell for that one there. But yeah, I think we'll just get through, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just play Galaga until I die here, and then we'll, uh, we will just end off the video. But I do want to mention that, well, you gotta be careful when you're shopping on Teemu, because, you know, these, these bootleg listings don't seem to be going away. They are, they are still, you know, a dime a dozen, um, and... You know, just use caution. You know, if you're if you're shopping for uh, a, if you're shopping for an N64 game, don't be looking on Timu. Like, shop on eBay or you know somewhere where you could actually get a genuine copy. But even with eBay, like I said, you have to be careful. Well, okay, that was pretty awful. But yeah, moral of the story is just use caution when you're shopping on Timu and websites like Timu. Also, holy crap, is this thing gamatized? I mean, you go to the website and it's like, spin this wheel to get free stuff. Do this to get free stuff and it's all it seems to just be a ploy to get you to refer people to the app through your link because at least in my experience i haven't been able to get anything unless you do that it also like makes it difficult to buy things that's the funny thing because you're getting like all these messages popping up it's like i just want to give you money like it's i just want to buy this stuff but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up get subscribed all that good stuff and if you really enjoyed it and want to get early access to my future episodes i do have a page Patreon down below that you can check out as well. But either way, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.